Alrighty folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the FX and Crypto Trading live session for today. Today is November 16, 2022. My name is Poyan Petrovsky and we'll be getting started in the session in just a few seconds. Of course, the disclaimer is there for your use and understanding that this is for educational and instructional purposes only. We're demonstrating a, a product that we utilize in our trading. And of course, as the ticker down below says, you know, we do have our trading book, our Mystery to Mastery series that's been designated as the number one release in multiple categories. So definitely check that out. Um, I'm just opening up the uh, chat here to make sure everything is looking good. And we'll be getting going in just a few seconds. The agenda is there also. We'll be looking at what the um, current market environment is. And of course, we'll also review some of the trades that we put on last time, manage if we have anything open, and of course, uh, look for new opportunities and execute on those as well. All right, looks like we're green across the board here. So let's go ahead and get started with the first thing, which is to review some of the sessions that, uh, some of the previous sessions, some of the previous trades that we've taken um, for these instruments, which is crypto and Forex. And of course, the best thing to do when it comes to this stuff is to look up our trade screenshots. So one of the first ones that we did have was the uh, Cardano one hour setup. Right there, this is what the screenshot had. We looked at this, you know, just about or close to a month ago uh, on October 19, 2022. So let's go ahead and pull up um, uh, Cardano <clears throat> on the charts. And of course, we're utilizing uh, trading view here. So let's go ahead and type up ABA USDT. What I typically utilize. And let's head back. This was, let's take a look. This was on the one hour time frame. That's very important. A lot of times that can get confusing. So it was on the hourly with the uh, five minute and eight minute up above. All right. So heading back all the way to November, I'm sorry, October 19th. All right. So right here, around here somewhere. Uh, let's go back. Uh, is this going to let me to go to an exact date? Uh, it will not. All right. So let's scroll on back to October 19th, which is right here somewhere. Now, interestingly, I don't have my chart here. Maybe I'm not loaded on the right one. Let me just pull this up like this. I do have a vertical line that I saw here that I put on. <clears throat> Maybe it was loaded from a different exchange. That is one of the things with, uh, with crypto. As you see when I type it up, you see many of them show up. And these are all tr treated almost as if they are a different instrument on uh, TradingView. But ultimately what matters is, for example, where the data is coming from. All of this data is free. Uh, there is, of course, a little bit of a variance, just like with uh, Forex. Uh, but ultimately, I believe the one that I did set it up on was on Binance, according to the screenshot that we have here. Uh, it does say on the top right, it says Binance. So let's go ahead and uh, keep scrolling back. And we're going to find our vertical line, which is right there, which is great to see. All right, so we're seeing our vertical line. And ultimately, we should uh, we should see it down here as well. There it is. All right. So what were we doing exactly on Cardano? Well, we were looks like we were going short. The entry was at thirty five sixty five, and it looks like it probably hit. All right. So thirty five. 65 was right here. Yes, it did hit. All right, so let's actually do a play-by-play -play with this trade. This is what we looked at. This is where we're going to come back to. That's our uh, UFO right there, 35.76. And I'm actually going to do the same thing here just so we have 
the full picture for October. There it is. We're going to roll it back all the way to here, which is, you know, right now we're essentially back in time. We are in October 19th, right? That's the, that's the real and beautiful power about uh, TradingView. It, it makes this part of uh, of the work when it comes to, uh, you know, back testing and utilizing your your technology that you have in front of you to the point where it's it's very, very easy to understand what's going on and what it is. So this is the exact picture that we were looking at uh, back in uh, on October 19th. And you can see that just because of the screenshot right there. All right. So we had a sell limit at 35.65. We had a uh, profit target T1 3531, and a final target for 300 bucks at 34.97. Our stop was at 35.89. Now let's see what actually happened with this trade, play by play. And um, if you are new to this and this is the first time you're looking at this, you're, you're thinking, well, you know, what the hell? You know, explain what you actually did. How did you get the setup? No worries, we're gonna get to that. As our agenda said, we are just doing things uh, one thing at a time. So uh, it looks like actually our entry was based on the eight minute. So that's good that we rolled both back. So what I'm going to do is just to make this extremely visual, which is you know what I prefer, uh, quite honestly, is I'm going to do a short position here. And we're going to go right at that 35.65. All right. And we're going to go ahead and extend this a little bit. So our inputs, our account, uh, size, we're not going to do all of that uh, for now. You know, let's, I think actually this is what it should be. But so entry price, 35.65. The stop is supposed to be at um, 0 0.3599. 34 ticks, 34 ticks. So that was our T1. All right. So that would have been T1. Um Let's see what actually happened with the trade. We're going to go ahead and uh, play this forward candle by candle so that we can see. All right, looks like we do have a fill here. So we're just going to move that there, just making sure everything still stayed the same. Um, 35 minutes, 34 ticks. Yep, so okay, so we are in the trade at this point. So that's our trade right there. It looks like it's at 708. So let's also roll this forward. Not all the way. Not what I meant to do. Sorry about that, guys. Um, ended up clicking the wrong um, <laughs> the wrong button. And it ended up shooting it back all the way to where we were. But no biggie. There it is. We're back at it. All right. Let's make this a little nicer and bigger so it's easier to see. Just gonna push this away so it's nice and visual. All right, uh, we're gonna move um, one forward. All right, so that's where we are. That's where we were initially. <coughs> All right, so right at this area somewhere, it looks like on this eight minute it hit at 716. So we're gonna give it a little bit more here. Okay, so we are definitely in the trade here on, on both of these, and this should still be fine. This is the hourly, so let's, uh, yep, there it is. That's basically telling us, hey, here it is. It, it touched on that moving average, therefore you should have had a trigger entry. All right, and just kind of moving it forward, seeing what would happen with this trade, right? So at this point, we are in the trade, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to do another vertical line so we know what our line of entry is. It's going to be right there, just going to so we don't confuse it. I'm just going to make it um, blue, straight line. So that's our line of, you know, that's our entry point. Now let's go forward a few more just to see what's happening with the trade. All right, looks like it is going in our direction. And not only that, we have a brand new UFO. So in this scenario, um, we don't have T1 just yet, but it's very good news that we have a new UFO forming. 
Now, an adjustment to this plan could be made, and you guys could discuss it, you know, or back test it with yourself. But at this point, you could actually move your stop from where it is up here. All right, so from where this, um, one of these days, I'm going to remember each one of these shortcuts. I, I used to know them for a different platform I used to use, but now I don't. Um, so at this point, you could take this stop, because this is where your stop is right now, at 35.99. And essentially have it brought down to a little bit above this uh, red UFO, the newly formed red UFO. Now, uh, you could do that. I, you know, would say backtest a little bit of the data before you do that, so you can understand and you know figure out what actually is going on. Okay, so it looks like a lot of a lot of back and forth action, not a whole lot going on. All right, so if you didn't move it there, you got stopped out. It was a smaller stop than what you had originally had, right? So the difference between here and here, you know, you saved on. You're still in the red. You're just, that's it, your exposure is done, okay? And, you know, if you kept your original stop, let's see what would have happened. How would, it, how would this trade have played out? Um, all right, a lot of sideways action, a lot of sideways action. You know, it seems like it wants to go higher, but, you know, new UFOs are forming. So, you know, that's the thing about these trades. And, and oh, all right, let's see, this did not stop us out right now. All right, I'm just going to push this through all the way so we know. If it did stop us out, it's going to actually uh, highlight this. So let's uh, keep at it. And then let's see, where are we up to now? All right, 1 o'clock. So we actually got to make sure that we are not overly extending over the um, climate here. And as you see at this point in time, which is at nine, we have an unconfirmed climate. All right, so just right there at nine. So obviously, let's see here. Let's go back. Anytime our climate changes and we're in a trade, we actually have to get out of it. So, <coughs> All right, so right here, and interestingly enough, right here, you would have had, if you moved your stop, you would have been out for a small loss or uh, the next candle over. You would have been out for a somewhat smaller loss after this candle closed. All right, so nonetheless, due to the climate changing on us, we're going to write this up as a small loss all right so go ahead and save that <clears throat> 2022 today is 11 16 and we have ada um, one hour and we're going to put it as a time stop and climate change and i'm going to tell you why climate change um, small loss okay um let me just save this for myself here okay now uh there's a couple different ways also here that might have you know you might have actually been in the profit in this trade if you applied our time stop rule all right all right sorry one second there we go. I think we're all set now. Um, this was our point of entry here. So just to prevent like uh, many colors and things happening here. Um, we're going to, I'll show you, you know, a different rule that we also have, which is a time stop rule. Again, this is a, a little bit more, especially if you're a little bit shorter term trade, uh, you want to apply this rule. Um, I personally have. I've tried to prove this rule wrong and it keeps proving itself right and why it's needed. Uh, this is the candle. Oh, I'm just going to zoom this in so it's easier to explain, right? So um, where we got filled was right here. All right. This is the candle of fill, right? This is where we got filled. We have a lot of information, a lot of, you know, indicators, a lot of... Um, price movement happening in our favor, right? When it happens in our favor, right, we expect it to work. If it's not working, 
then it's okay. We're proven, we're proven wrong. We need to be mindful of that and say, that's fine. I thought this was going to work this way. It's not. I need to get out. How do you, you know, quantify that? How do you make a rule? How do you make a plan so you don't just say, oh, I'll just get out whenever this hits, you know, green? <laughs> you know, you don't want to stick to something like that. You do want to stick to something that you can measure. And something that we measure is, in fact, the time stop rule. That time stop rule is the following. We have one, two, three candles that we've been in, and this trade has not hit its T1. Right? So we have three candles that we're in. Right? This is three times eight. It's 24 minutes that we've been in this trade. And this trade has not hit its T1. T1 is supposed to be our safety target. T1 is supposed to be hit, you know, in the upper 70 to 80% of the time of the trades. Because that's, you didn't make money from T1. You just eliminated risk. That was, uh, that was basically the price to pay to play. That was the entry fee, so to, so to speak. Right? Um, ultimately, that T1 needs to be hit most of the time. And we are constraining that uh, quantity of time it hits by utilizing a time stop. A time stop rule says, if within these three candles I don't get T1, I get out on the fourth one. All right? So that would, you know, I kind of wish I didn't uh, delete this. There it is, right? I'm just going to take this out. So that basically says, if this um, trade did not work itself out, by this third candle, is that the third or the fourth? Let me just zoom it in again. It's very important to be extremely specific. And I, I know this may seem a little anal, but believe me when I tell you, the more you have this through your head, the better you're going to be off. So basically, if this trade does not hit its target within the closure of this candle here, I'm going to go ahead and get out at market right here, right in this scenario. All right, so if there's any questions on that, please type it in the chat. Um, if there isn't, you know, that's uh, fine too. That means you, you already understand the concept. Um, or if you're watching this recorded and you're watching this after a while, uh, definitely, you know, shoot me a quick email, boyan at tradictive.com. It's right here. Okay. Now, in the scenario of utilizing the time stop, what would have happened here? We would have been in a small profit, right? At this location here, exactly. Let's say plus or minus, you know, wherever you got out. You know, we're not going to count it, but that's why I don't try to like quantify these because ultimately the small wins will cancel out the small losses. What's going to matter is what's the percentage of full stops versus, you know, T2 wins. That's what's ultimately going to uh, give your account the directionality. Not the small wins, not the small losses, sweating it over, you know, okay, well, this was, you know, $25 and this small loss was $26.50. Okay, $1.50. Good job. <laughs> the, the difference is, is minuscule. $1.50 is not going to make or break an account. But what ultimately will make or break an account is if you're hitting full stops more than you're hitting... Um, you know, above T1, uh, either either timeouts or uh, T2s. So in this scenario, if we were to follow our strictest of rules, our, our you know uh, short-term time trade, uh, short-term trading rules, well, this would have been a small win right here. So it really depends. That's why I'm trying to kind of show you both sides of the picture here. If you didn't utilize this this rule. You had a small loss because you because of the uh, climate change at this candle up here. All right, so the point of entry being here, your small loss might have been here. If it were actually letting me do this, right. or it would have been <clears throat> a small win somewhere here, and ultimately you're you're less. In the trade, using this rule, you're also 
uh, setting yourself up for a potential, you know, second entry up here if the time and climate is still right, which in this scenario was right, right? It was still a, a, a down climate for another two hours before it became overextended. So that's why I said it's it's really important to understand how you approach it. And then that's, that's the difference. You can see a difference between a small loss and a small win um, right here and there, uh, right here in this exact uh, scenario. Okay, so that's that one for Cardano. Um, like I said, you know, either a small loss or a win. Small win or loss is what I'm going to put on the screenshot. I'm also going to take this one as well, just so we have it documented, because uh, documentation is king. No matter how much you think your member may be the best in the world, trust me when I tell you this, it is not going to be as good as a screenshot. All right, there we go. Uh, the next one that we did, there were a couple of them that we did. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated. If you want, if you have any questions on the Matic trade, uh, you know, please send them over uh, because this one we built both as a directional trade. We bought it at no, uh, let's say we bought it at no leverage. We bought it as a, um, a direct, a uh, no, no unleveraged, basically spot, um, <clears throat> and this one essentially, I think, ultimately did end up going against us. This is also on Binance. Let me just pull it up. Matic on Binance. This was on the daily. All right, this is where we're going long at. This is what this trade experienced, a lot of ups and downs. And right now it's essentially back to where it started. Um, and this was on the hourly and the 55 minute. And let's just get these situated like that. That's our entry for Matic. All right, now our stop you know, if you had a stop on this trade, if you didn't, uh, then you're still in it. Uh, obviously, if, if you did have a stop, this trade ended up stopping out. Um, it was at 80.52, the stop. So right there where the green arrow is. All right. So if you utilize this trade with a stop and a target, you know, I did it just to show, you know, uh, the, the, basically the, how it needs to work, where, where we're going to take some money off, where we're going to uh, leave some money on. Um, but ultimately, we built this trade with uh, the consideration that uh, Matic was getting 9.5 APY paid out uh, weekly. So that was the reason uh, for this trade. Now, if you are still in this trade, you know, you can send me an email or anything. If you're still in this trade, send me an email. But... Um, you know, ultimately, this ended up being a little bit of a roller coaster, right? So, from the 19th of October to about the 2nd of November, you saw a little bit of movement, right? A little negative, a little positive, nice in the positive. Actually, you were mostly in the positive after October 23rd. So, after October 23rd, you were essentially in the green the whole time. Right in, in between uh, the entry point and October 23rd, you were essentially sideways. So if we were to uh, put that here in a, wait a minute, there we go. In this, this is our entry point. So from here to about here, you were sideways, right? You were a little up, little down, nothing crazy. And of course, this was a, a bit of a longer term play that we had in mind for Matic. We got in, we were in the positive here, in the positive, almost came back to our entry right here, and then exploded upwards. Okay, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, now this is freaking awesome. On top of that, right, every week you're getting a little bit more of an increase to your position. Okay, so that's where things get even more interesting. So let's say you're still holding it, right? You're still positive on this trade. Right, if we were to throw a, a horizontal here where our entry was, you're still positive. 
right? Ended up being negative again, ended up bouncing up again, to almost touch our entry point again, still in the positive again. Nonetheless, you're, you're, you know, you're above water. That's not saying anything uh, other than that. Uh, but interestingly enough, right, if you, because we were holding this for longer term, if you held on to this, and if we compare our screenshot of where we were expecting to get out at, fully to get out at, 122.26 and T1 at 87.17, that actually did happen. It did hit both of these at the same time. But let's say, you know, for the sake of argument, you know, you approach this as a long-term investor. You say, you know what? I'll take some off here, right? So you took some off here. You didn't take all of it off on uh, November 4th, okay? You, it, we see that the high was uh, 1.371. So you definitely hit your T2 there. Okay, but let's say, you know what, you said, I'm only going to take another, you know, 20% off here from my entry point. All right, and, and that's fine because it also, depending on the platform that you utilize, you have to unstake it. That sometimes takes a week. So you might have gotten out here as opposed to here, which is fine also. And then restaked it at that point and then... Um, you know, ultimately your buy point is still the same. You just lost basically a week of, of staking, which is not something unheard of because you wanted to capture some of the profits. All right. Now, if that and then the reason why I say just email me if you have questions on this one, message me. Uh, it's it's a little it's it's gonna take the whole session to try to explain it. And we've already spent half the session explaining past trades. I definitely want to look at something. Um, I definitely want to look at some other opportunities in front of us because, um, you know, then we'll have nothing to talk, to talk about at the next session, <laughs> right? So um, as far as other trades, we did have an Aussie USD uh, trade also. And that's the last one here that we have from the majors, um, Aussie USD. Right here, uh, this one looks like it was a sell at 63.061. And with a stop at 63.310, this made it may have just gone straight to a stop out. So 63 right here, uh, 63. 060 was our entry right there. Uh, looks like we got one, two, three. On this fourth one, you got out due to a time stop. So if you didn't hold on to the time stop, right? Because this closed right here, basically right at our entry. So this was, again, it was a small loss. If you didn't get out at this time, time stop, it was a full stop out. All right, so um, let me just... Put a line here, horizontal, right? This was our entry at 060, uh, 6306 was our entry. And it looks like right here would have been a time stop. So if we were to draw this, I think, well, the, the stop was, uh, the stop was at 63310. 63310 right here and our profit would have been at 62810 so 62 so that's 1 2 3 62 8, 10. so something like that obviously that didn't happen so as soon as this candle opened which is pretty much right at entry uh, again, given that this might have been a you know massive spiking move, we're not going to say, oh, we got out of break even. That that would be essentially not true. We're going to say we got out for a small loss. <laughs> All right, um, that's Aussie USD. We got eleven sixteen for our setup. Small time stop. Small loss.
All right. Let's take a look at some opportunities that we might have in front of us. Uh, any requests for those of you that are with me live and want to look at some crypto or you want to look at some uh, Forex, let me know what the uh, crowd thinks. <clears throat> in the meantime, I'm just going to be browsing and seeing what's in front of us here just to get an idea. Okay, something interesting here. Let's see what we got. First confirmed up climate on the. Ah, oh man, but no UFOs, Hunter. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. I was like, look at that first uh, daily up climate after a bunch of unconfirmed climates. We're, we're fairly close to the moving average. Pretty much right on the money, uh, but no UFOs. 63, 635 is the moving average. 63, 680 current price. No uh, UFOs nearby. <laughs> and this is the beauty of the software and the technology that we utilize. Is This is how quick you can go through some of these all right we got may, we may have something here 147 748 prices above moving average um yep it's above moving average nothing to do okay i'm just looking at the climate that's all i'm doing if you're thinking to yourself you know what the hell is he doing just looking at the climate. And here we are. We have arrived. <laughs> um, let's see here. 58041. 58041. That is right here. Nothing to do there either. All right, that's it. We're done for the session. Thanks, everybody. Um, we just went through all the majors and all the minors, uh, didn't find anything we liked on the daily. So now we're going to go down to the four hour and do the same exact thing again. Um, and now I'm just going to go on the, um, oh man, I'm blanking out for, for some reason right now, the 21 minute <clears throat> and 15, just to see what we got going on with the four hour. All right, on the four hour, we have no confirmation on the, why does it feel wrong every time? Hold on. Sorry, one second. Let me just check something real quick here. Yeah, so with the 240 minute, um, <clears throat> you know, we typically utilize the 21 minute and the 15 minute, which is what I have here. It's just that sometimes if you want to, the 21 minute, you can also change to the 21 range. Um, you know, and that's purely and entirely up to you. You don't have to. All right, uh, let's turn this off. Okay, third day out of typically six, halfway through the climate, not a bad deal at all by any means um, four hour 94 29 94 29 if price were to move up do we see this happening here uh, we do uh, and then we have multiple UFOs above 94 510 to 670 entry at 94 that might be a little A little too um, far for a safety target uh, that, that I'm basically willing to 
entertain we're essentially getting in at 9436 with a stop above 94 close to 70. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can set this one up here. Our entry would be 94,334. So now let's talk about how we actually do these, right? The way we do it is the following. We have, we're waiting for a confirmed climate. We have a confirmed climate here because we have a thick dot. The color of the thick dot in this scenario, or ruby red, means that we're looking for a short entry. We're looking for opportunities to the short side. So the first question is, you know, you know whether or not should we trade this or not? And in this scenario is yes, we, we should trade it. You know, should we trade it? Right, the answer is yes. Okay, and then we need direction, short. Well, we need, what's the next thing we need, right? We need an entry, right? Entry, exits. How do we do those? Well, we do those the following way. We take a moving average indicator, something that's a common indicator in most platforms in this scenario. It's the nine EMA that you see here. And we take this nine EMA and we chart it to these upper charts up here. And we look for an overlap to our proprietary technology, which is the UFOs, which stands for, you know, uh, automatic unfilled orders. All right, auto UFOs. And on top of that, we are looking for a setup that overlaps this common indicator, the 90MA that we see here the 94285, we need them to be inside a UFO, right there. Okay, this we anticipate as price moves up that this will go increase to at least 94,334, and that's gonna make the EMA to essentially, if we were to represent it by a purple line, if it's um, around here somewhere, Right, if price moves up, that the moving average is going to move up. Right, so if price goes from here to here, we intend them, for, we anticipate them to meet inside of the UFO, and that's when we have a confluence of evidence that we should be expecting our trade to work in that particular direction. All right, so let's go ahead and set that up exactly. So, oh, nine, four, three, three, four. All right, stop loss has to be. In the white space above, right, because we're going short, our stop has to be somewhere above here. Where exactly? I'll tell you in just a minute. Since we have an overlapping UFO, as you see, there's two UFOs here. We're going to take them, uh, the uh, highest one above, so 9467. 67. And we're going to do the same exact thing here. Okay, we're risking 150 bucks. So this will be an, an extremely, you know, small size trade. It's the only reason why I was hesitating on taking this, but you know, it, it, it does fit the criteria and uh, we have plenty of time in the uh, climate here for this trade to work itself out. And uh, ultimately, if it doesn't work, we still have our time stop. Okay, so now some of the, thi some of the things that are applicable to um, Forex that might not be so applicable to let's say futures, is that these markets are decentralized. We have a bit of a difference in uh, price uh, quotations across brokers, right? Because the liquidity providers are not the same. And the reason, so the way we you know, compensate for that is by having um, a rounding rule when it comes to these things. So since we're selling right now, we're gonna round down for entry Right, our stop, we're going to round up and add seven pips. Okay, for 
the targets, we're still going to round up the opposing time frame common UFO plus two. I'm going to show you exactly what that means at this chart below. But I just wanted to share this with you that we have this rule because the Forex markets are decentralized. Okay, so we're going to round down our entry. So that means that we're going to go down to 94.33. Okay, we're going to round up our stop. And it's going to be, well, not this. I don't know what this is. 9467 is where it's supposed to be. So I was like, something's off here. 233 pips seems excessively high. Uh, 9467 is the top of that, right? You see that right there? Okay. Well, there's no rounding to be done, obviously, right? Because that's already rounded. But we do have to add seven pips, which you can do either here or here if you're utilizing trading view. So adding um, seven pips for the stop from 34 plus seven, that gets us to 41, right? Now why is, I think we just don't have any UFOs here. Way down there, nothing below, so okay, that's fine. Um, the reason why I was looking for that is just wanted to make sure that there's no UFOs that are in my way um, at that at that location we don't have a t2 so we're going to just put something in there to have a placeholder but we're simply going to trail stop this all right so we now have our setup we're risking 150 bucks that's uh 34 uh units there uh entry is at 94.33 now something that i really like about trading view is the good time and force so obviously right now we're looking at we're on the third day out of typically six that this goes down four. Uh, given that today's Wednesday, that means we have uh, up until Monday essentially or Sunday really. So we're going to put this time in force until Sunday. And I'm in Pacific Standard Time, so this will be... Um, this will be when the market's open, which is essentially three. So if we were to give it another six hours from there, so it'll be around 11 o'clock on Sunday. All right. And we're going to go and sell that. There's our setup. Now, just as a placeholder, I'm also going to put in um, the same setup here. But instead of, you know, 0.093, I'm just going to put it at 0 0.8. It's not because that's what I'm aiming at. I just need to have something here to show that, hey, we do have a T2. There was no obstacle in between here. And this is what we're going with. Actually, that's going to just make it too crazy to, to see. So I'm just going to put it at 0 0.9 just so, it, uh, just so it, sh it shows nicely in the window. Obviously, that's not the T2 that we're going to utilize. Let's just, okay, I'm not sure why that just executed, but let's go ahead and close that. Um, I don't get it. It was the same exact 9433, doesn't matter. Uh, take profit, stop loss, 0 0.9474, and our T2 is going to be at 0.9. Wonderful, and... 94.33, yeah, that should be fine. There we go. That's fine now. <laughs> okay, and then here we see our T2 way down there. But again, we're not just going to move it up a little here just so it's easier to screenshot. And then we're going to put our vertical line so it's easier to track this trade. Right, we're going to put our vertical line right here that this is what we were looking at. Okay, not what I meant to do. Okay, it was Alt V, so I'm not sure why I did that. But anyways, there's a vertical line, there's a vertical line, and here's a vertical line. All right, so this is exactly what we were looking at uh, when we were looking at this trade. So it's easier to see and easier to um, 
Remember, when we're reviewing these trades, 1116, uh, we have USD CHF, which is the four hour setup. All right. So that was our setup for this trade. Ultimately, like I said, the T2 is going to be there just as a placeholder. So we know we have two legs in this trade. All right, um, let's switch gears, head on to crypto, and see if we can find something. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of activity, right? <laughs> Close to none. Uh, first confirmed daily climate though, I'm sorry, four hour climate. Uh, moving average is at 1418. No, no UFOs nearby all the way up there and all the way up there. Cardano, um, 3351. Uh, that's in here. If this were to shoot up, this 74 does not look bad at all. Uh, 3374 price is at 3275 yeah that's gonna work I think uh, it ultimately will have to make sure that the moving average does meet up in the UFO but uh, if it doesn't the back testing will tell us so 03374. Our stop is going to be at 34. 3416. So we got 42 ticks. Alright. Um risking 150. Alright, now let me just look something up real quick when it comes to our Um, when it comes to, I, I broke these off so I can see them easier, and now I can't find them. <laughs> uh, essentially, the, the formula that I went over in my um, In the class that we went over, the live class that we went over a, a few, was it? it's been a few weeks now, um, which basically tells us exactly how we round up and round off to get the um, movement for uh, the, the, the how much we need to add, how much fluff we need to add on top of it. For right now, I'm just going to put this at um, 26 right here uh, just to keep it in place so we have a trade. Um, actually, let me just redo that real quick. The reason why, because uh, we didn't utilize the time stop, the uh, 0 0.3374. Our stop is at 34.26. six, which is actually inside of this UFO here. So it has to go above 0 0.3435, giving it another 10 is 45.71. So it's a good thing we saw it. Um, the reason why I wanted to redo this is the following. I want to keep this in force until the climate expires. Uh, currently on the first four hour climate, we have another hour to go. All right, so in an hour, it'll be eight. My time, this goes down typically for six. So um, th that is six four hour climate. So essentially by tomorrow at eight o'clock. 17th at eight. 17th at eight. All right. And now we're gonna hit the cell. Everything looks good. Yep. And that's our setup. Um, now for our final target, we don't have anything down below either. So we're going to just do the same thing that we did for the other trade, which is we're going to go, go ahead and put the trade in. 
and just put an ambiguous target down there just to have something you know, in its place. Let's say we're going to expect this to go down to 30. All right. What do we do next? We put our verticals so we know what it is that we were looking at at the time of entry. Okay, so we're going to put our vertical right here, right here, and right here. All right, take a screenshot of that. 2022, 11, <clears throat> 16, and that's ADA. Well, I knew because <laughs> we have the ADA um, analysis we did from the previous trade. This is the four hour setup. Done deal. All right. Um, let's see if we have anything similar on these ones here on Ethereum. We don't have any UFOs nearby. BNB. A very similar scenario, so I would prefer not to do the same thing with both of them because there's a good chance that they will end up moving the same. Bitcoin is in a similar situation, leading the, the charge to the downside. Um, seven twenty one, seven twenty one. Yeah, nothing there. Is anything up? Looks like something is going up in this market here. First confirmed up. SFP, um, <clears throat> moving average at 63.38, that's right in here, 63.38 is right here, essentially at the bottom of this UFO, um, not the best of setups by any means but still a valid trade. And especially on an instrument that seems to be, you know, defying the overall market trend, uh, would not be a bad idea to capitalize on it. <clears throat> Let's do that. Buy, we're getting in at 0.6699. Stop loss is at 0.6245, so take the take away 10 there. Same thing on the profit target, risking 150. Um, time and force, 5, so basically the same thing as the other one. It will be good until tomorrow at 8, my time. Okay, and then the same thing, we're going to buy it. Stop loss the same. Profit is going to be at 0 0.8174. Right above it there. Buy that too. Pop this on. A vertical line. Vertical line. And for line. Okay, screenshot. Save that. 2022 1116. Um, it says SFP for our setup. All right, now if I went a little too quick on that one, um, that's mainly because that's just how you have to be, especially if you're going to be uh, day trading this stuff. Um, you need to you need to kind of train your eyes of what you're looking for, what it is that you need to see on the screen to know that you have a trade, and then just go right after it as if uh, being chased. <laughs> um, it, it's really that simple, especially with our software. Um, and, and like with all things, the more you practice with it, the 
easier it becomes. The more you um, are exposed to it, the easier it is to understand, you know, what it is that you need to do. Uh, will you make mistakes? You know, I still make mistakes to this day. It's just a matter of, you know, being conscious of it and saying, okay, you know, we need to, um, this is what we need to do. This is how it needs to look. Um, and if I make a mistake, that's okay. We're only human. And we are doing the best that we can do with the instruments that we're given. So in this scenario, um, you know, this is the, the, you know, the few setups that we've had and the few uh, things that we've had. So again, I, I know some of this may be a little too fast and confusing. I'm trying to give you the realistic approach to it as opposed to, you know, just uh, dissecting one trade and, and, you know, wasting an hour, essentially just looking at one trade. The level of, you know, attention that this requires is basically complete 100% undivided attention. And if you have that and you dedicate that to your trading, you will definitely see uh, your, yourself improving how quickly you can look at the market and see if you have a trade in front of you or not. Um, because, it's, and, and, and by all means, if you're doing this with other tools, I, I just hope they're, you know, adjustable and as fluid with the markets as the markets are themselves. Because um, if things don't adjust to the market in, in a fast enough pace, then uh, you're essentially, you, you're, you're running a sprint at the pace of a marathon. It's just not going to work out. Everything's going to move too fast. And by the time you're ready to pull the trigger, the situation changed. So, okay. I, I hope uh, I hope the session was helpful. We did a bit of review. We did a bit of uh, setting up some trades. And I hope to catch you guys next time. And if you have any questions or any comments, you know, please feel free to send them over uh, to my email, which is right there, boyan at tradictive.com. Looking forward to our next uh, time we meet. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the day.